Thank you very much, Leader Boehner. Together, we welcome the many new members of Congress who today join the House of Representatives of the United States of America. Congratulations to all of our new members and to our reelected members. Your constituents have placed great trust in you. Your families have given you the love and support to, have make, you, to make your leadership possible. Let us join together now and salute the families of the 111th Congress. I also want to thank my own family, my husband of 45 years, Paul Pelosi, who is the first Paul. And our children, Nancy, Corinne, Christine, Jacqueline, Paul, and Alexandra, and our grandchildren, Alexander and Madeline, and Liam, Sean, and Ryan, and Paulie and Thomas, and I also want to acknowledge my brother Thomas, the former mayor of Baltimore. I wish to express my appreciation to the people of San Francisco for granting me the privilege of representing them and serving them in Congress. And I thank my caucus. Thank you, Mr. Hoyer, Mr. Clyburn. Thank you, Mr. Larson, for your nomination this morning. Uh, thank you to the members of the caucus for granting me the historic opportunity of breaking the marble ceiling and to serve once again as the first woman speaker of the House. Thank you for your generous words and for your commitment to put country ahead of party. Without reservation, let us stand together, not just today, but in the days ahead, to live up to that resolve. Few Congresses and few Presidents in history have been given the responsibility and the privilege of serving the nation in a time of such profound challenge. We do so renewed and refreshed by the new members who join our ranks today. Again, welcome to our new members. It is in that spirit that I pledge to you, let us all pledge to the American people that we will look forward, not backward. We will join hands, not point fingers. We will rise to the challenge, recognizing that our love of country is stronger than any issue which may divide us. This is the lesson and the legacy of the last election. The American people demanded a new era of change and accountability. Yes, we have problems as grave as our country has faced in generations. But now we enter a new Congress with a new era with a powerful sense of hope and pride in our great country. Two weeks from today, as Mr. Boehner indicated, on the steps of this Capitol, we will inaugurate the 44th President of the United States. From the inaugural platform, he will look down the long stretch of the National Mall and see the steps of the Lincoln Memorial from which Reverend Martin Luther King, Jr. called us to the deepest truth of our founding dream. When Barack Obama raises his right hand and takes the oath of office, we will know and the world will witness how far America has come. We 
We will celebrate that moment, but recognize that it is only a beginning. Together with our new president, we as a Congress and a country must fulfill the rest of America's promise. All of that promise will not be redeemed quickly or easily, but it must be pursued urgently. With spirited debate, and without partisan deadlock or delay. Hardworking and still hopeful Americans who are losing their jobs, their businesses, their retirement savings, their homes, or are facing foreclosure cannot wait any longer for us to move from the depths of a recession to the solid ground of an honest and fair prosperity for the many, not just the few. We need action, and we need action now. children without health care and millions more who fear losing coverage or are facing rising costs cannot afford to wait any longer. We need action and we need action now. <laughs> States facing financial crises which are threatening the education and the health of our children, the well-being of our seniors, the public safety of our communities cannot afford to wait any longer. We need action, and we need action now. Our country is challenged by the climate crisis, by the need for energy security, and the need for 21st century infrastructure. On all of these issues, and many more, we cannot afford to wait. Our nation needs action and we need action now. <laughs> America's crises at, home are crises at home are matched by conflicts abroad, a terrorist threat that could strike there or here. We cannot afford to wait to renew our alliances, our leadership, and our respect in the world. We cannot afford to, deploy, to wait to deploy the power of our ideals. We can, and for the sake of our security, for the courageous Americans who serve on the front lines, and for our veterans who have bravely served our country, we cannot afford to wait to modernize and rebuild our military. Every chance we get, we must express our appreciation to our heroic men and women in uniform and their families for their service and their sacrifice to our country. show America and the world that we are equal to every test of a turbulent and unprecedented time. Let us listen to each other. Let us respect every voice and every view. And then, together, let us act. As we in, <laughs> as we in Congress pledge to reach across the aisle, we recognize that history will measure this decisive moment not just by what we do here in Washington, but how we reflect and respect how all Americans work together for the common good to strengthen America's future and faith in itself. As we take the oath of office today, we accept a level of responsibility as daunting and demanding as any that previous generations of leadership have faced. With the help of God, the light of our values, the strength of the American people, and the hopes that we have for our children and their future, God will continue to, uh, God will bless us so that America will continue to be, as our founders predicted more than 200 years ago, a rising, not a setting sun. Today, Cardinal McCarrick will honor us by asking God's blessing on our work. May God bless our work, and may God continue to bless America. Thank you all.